I function a lot for my travel videos as a one-man band. When I'm back home in, um, in eastern Pennsylvania, I live in Bucks County, and I do a lot of commercial work out of there, I usually work with one other person on a crew. In this case, uh, I have a very good partnership with a young guy who uh, my youngest boy used to babysit this kid. He, I'm 65, he's 27, and we're, we're like Batman and Robin. Uh, he has a wedding uh, video business, and uh, he does these great, uh, really funky looking wedding videos. And, um, and he's a great natural shooter and editor, and I bring the editorial gravitas to there. So when we're working together, you know, um, maybe he'll be the primary cameraman. I might do sound or second camera, or he'll do drone, and I'll do, I'll do primary camera or something like that. I've never worked with more than one other person, uh, so I don't know what you know. Uh, as a photographer, I worked as a one-man band, and and. Um, I used to find that uh, on my rare jobs that I did, like advertising jobs, where there would be a crew, the more people that were working for me, the worse my pictures became. I, 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 like, I like being small and responsive. Now, um, uh, there are certain things you give up, like a professional audio man or something like that. I've never had that luxury. I've done my own audio or he's done my audio or whatever. But when I'm doing my travel videos, I'm, I am a one-man band. And so I've made a real science of finding the smallest, lightest gear that will do the job. I mean, I am constantly, you know, you read about those mountain climbers who will like take a razor and, and, and shave off a couple of ounces off the bottom of their hiking boots to save the weight. I, I'm that fanatical about gear. If there's a lighter, smaller tripod, if there's a smaller camera, smaller lens, I'm all over it because um, I like to joke that the older and heavier I get, the newer and smaller and lighter I want my cameras to be, <laughs> especially in places like San Miguel with these hills, you know. Every ounce counts. So, so what have, can, you, can you name off your core gear as a one-man band? Sure, yeah. Um, I, um, I, for 30 years, I was an endorser for a major DSLR company, and about five years ago, I jumped ship when I got... Um, I went to a mirrorless camera and I went specifically to Sony's. So right now my, my main camera for, for video is a Sony A6500. It has an, uh, a crop sensor chip but, uh, and I, I have maybe three or four small lenses, a, a wide angle zoom, a, a medium zoom and a couple of fast primes. And then I always carry as a second camera uh, a Sony RX10, either the version 2 or the version 4. And this is a one inch chip, slightly smaller, about the same size as Micro Four Thirds. But it has a built in 24 to 200 lens on one of them or a 24 to 600 millimeter lens. And it's just tiny camera. And for, for versatility, for um, it, it's, it's my favorite shot grabbing camera. I, you, you don't have to worry about dust on the sensor. I just covered here not too long ago uh, a festival called the Exploding Hammers, which was uh, shrapnel, dust, and everything. And I didn't have to, I had this, the, the Sony RX10 IV, which has the 24 to 600 millimeter lens. And I never, you know, I never needed anything different than that. And there was dust and dirt everywhere, but I never had to take, it's a, the lens is permanently attached to the camera. So I never worried about the dust. So in that, in that case, as a one man band, I had that one camera and I had a drone, a little drone. And in the middle of the day, I just went away from the action, put my drone up, got some overhead aerials and then came back and everything. Covering events as a one man band is very hard. Covering stories, like I'm, I'm also working on a different story. I'm doing a thing here in town on a, a luthier, a guy who makes guitars. And I have much more control over that. And he's a lovely guy. And so I'll say, Sergio, can you do that again? Can, if I stand on the chair and shoot over your head, would you do that again? And so that way, in, in those situations, being a one-man band is not too bad. But when you're trying to cover a procession or an event, you know, uh, a professional film crew would have, you know, they'd have a guy up on the rooftop that, you know, it's like a military operation. And, and, you know, or if you're very young and mobile, you climb up and you jump around. So I'm not as mobile as I was. So, so, so I, I, you run into some problems when you're trying to cover things as a one man band, uh, when there are events. Mm -hmm. And 
lights? I mean, how, can you carry all the gear? Well, you know, um, I don't do much with lights except when I'm doing a talking head uh, because um, the Sony has such great low light capabilities. And I bought a couple of super fast prime lenses. I have a, a, a 50, uh, well, it's a 35, but it, it becomes like a, a 50 full frame equivalent that has a f-stop of less than f1. It's a f. 0.095, so it's like a super light gathering uh, lens, and then I have a, a, a wide angle that has an f 1.4 aperture, and the Sony, the the, the Sony that I use, uh, is pretty good up to about ISO 12,800. Uh, so 12,800 with a 1.4 lens, it's got to be pretty dark before you you need something. Uh, I like to carry a small light because you know even if because um, you know an artificial light can create mood, you can do something with mood and everything like that. But when you're a one-man band, you have to make some hard choices. So I, I load it up on the uh, fast glass, and if I wanted to, Sony, if I wanted to go into the full frame, Sony has a camera that'll shoot in the dark, I th you know, shoot like 102,000 ISO or something. But that's a whole nother set of lenses and stuff. And I went with the smaller stuff because that's what I was uh, interested in.